In this new episode of What's in the Cards, we will unpack three new packs, this time from Strixhaven, Time Spiral and Modern Horizons. As I have shown before, this series will have the most amazing guests, this time with the woman who runs three businesses and is amazing on social media with her creative TikTok channel, Instagram, Twitter and Twitch and YouTube, all aimed at Magic the Gathering content. She plays aristocrats and actually mostly that, but also slivers and her enthusiasm about the game seems unbridled and sincere as she so intensely gets into the game in these past few months. I am excited to introduce Solring and TG. Thank you so much for having me and I'm so excited to be here and open up these packs. That's always an am amazing time, uh, of course, opening some packs. And nice to meet you. Uh, so let's start off with a few questions and then go on to the first pack because I uh, can understand that you are really excited. <laughs> um, so tell me, what is your favorite deck? I have heard you t talk a lot about uh, Slivers, but also Aristocrats. So I play pretty much mostly Commander and I have eight decks right now, I think it is. Um, my eight favorite, decks. yeah, my favorite two that I kind of gravitate towards is my Sliver deck, mm -hmm. uh, which I run with the first Sliver and my Aristocrat with Tasa Karloff. So those two are kind of my main little loves right now, but I do have other ones as well, yeah. Right, cool. And uh, but, but if you have to choose one favorite? Oh, probably Slivers right now, just because I'm having a lot of fun with five color mana base. Okay, yeah, I can uh, I can see that. So, and if you look at one of the cards, uh, what Magic the Gathering card do you identify with the most? I feel like it's a given to say Soul Ring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you identify with the Soul Ring, so why is that? Um, well, I love the artwork first and foremost. The original and, one? Yeah, and okay. all, honestly all of them. There's even some like art cards that I love. And I love, you know, obviously the feeling you get if you do turn one Soul Ring, which is of course. quite funny and fun, but yeah. Mm. And turns you into the enemy immediately. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, all right, so we have chosen these three packs, one from Strixhaven, one from Modern Horizons and one from uh, Time Spiral. Uh, why did you choose these three uh, packs? Uh, well, I really liked opening up these three packs whenever they were released. I know mm -hmm. I was really into Strixhaven, especially when it came out. Um, and then Time Spiral, you know, there's you never know what you're going to get. There's so many goodies in there. And Modern sure. Horizons 2 is another uh, good one, too. I also been really into the Mystery Booster Convention Editions, but that was after I got these packs. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Uh, so we had a little bit of a difficult timing, but you did also, I think, open one of the uh, Strixhaven boxes on your YouTube channel, right? Yeah. yeah. So people yeah. can watch that as well. I'll make sure yeah. to link it uh, in the description. All right, uh, so we will start off with the Strixhaven uh, set booster. Yeah, let's uh, open the first four cards. Perfect. All right. Sometimes these packs are so hard to open. That's true. It, uh, it takes practice. I must say, I'm not even always that fast with them. <laughs> yeah. You'd think by now I'd get the hang of it, but... True. It's, it's always the first one that, that gets you. Yeah, and then by like the third one, you're like, oh, perfect. True. <laughs> but yeah, you can't really do retakes go. of them. <laughs> but oh, people right. like the sound anyway, so it, it will be fine. All right, we got it open here. All right. All so right. Uh, take us with you on your journey of the cards All that right. you open. This card will be the first card. And it is uh, a creature, a 4-4 called Fomori Noman. Oh, so this is one from the mystery, mystery uh, packs then. Fomori Noman. Nomad. Yeah. Whoa. So five mana for just a 4-4 Nomad Giant. Yeah. That's a, that's a weird... Maybe you can use that as a token as well. Maybe, so the... yeah. The first time I saw a card like, like that was the Air Elemental. It was really weird and bewildering. We, I had the same experience as you right now. As <laughs> me right now. <laughs> but that's really weird. It does look cool though. Yeah. 
All right. So moving on to the next one is、mm-hmm. the Strixhaven, I guess, art card.、Mm-hmm. It's one of the white ones, and then we have a plains. All right. And from、uh, which、oh, artist? Um, Jonas Darrow. Okay. Cool. And then we have a lesson card.、Mm-hmm. Expand、uh, autonomy. It's the、okay. lesson card that、uh, it's a sorcery. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It gains vigilance until the end of turn. Cool.、Uh, moving on to the next is charge through. For one green, it's an instant. Target creature gains trample until the end of turn and draw a card. Right. So cool. Green flavored cantrip as well. Yeah, my favorite thing、uh, is drawing. I love drawing cards.、Okay. Anything that gives me draw, I'm here for it. Nice. Okay, so you like all, you like all the smaller cards that draw you as well. Yeah, and like in the enchantments too, where like if a creature dies, you can draw a card.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are some of my favorite things. Because if my hand is full, I'm I'm happy. But if I have like w- if I have like one card or you know no cards, it's, it's quite hard. It feels powerful as well to have all your cards in your hand. Yeah, exactly. Cool.、Oh, right, moving on to the next, we、mm-hmm. have a blue called Frost Trickster. It's a two-two creature bird wizard with flying, and when he ETBs, tap target creature and opponent controls. A creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Right. I do have a a blue Talran deck where、mm-hmm. it just makes a whole lot of like blue blue drakes. True. Gives everything flying. Th- those、uh, stop other creatures as well. Yeah. Like this、uh, freezing spell. True. Yeah, and I ha- I have sleep in there too, so it just taps all the creatures that opponent controls. So that's quite fun too. And then I usually use that as my win con. So I use sleep.、Mm-hmm. Tap it all, and then I just can attack with everything. Cool. You already could probably attack with the drakes, but now they really have no chance. Exactly. Yeah. So、um, between these cards, between these lands and the frog, and maybe the old card as well,、uh, what was your favorite art from these? Favorite art, I would say, probably the blue, the blue wizard. Mm-hmm. I the love, yeah, the the frost trickster because I love cards that are have the blue tones, the purple tones, and pink tones. True. Let's see. And do some of these have some、uh, cool flavor text that really、uh, hit you?、Mm-hmm. So let's see. So the flavor text of the the blue frost was、mm-hmm. the most important skill is a mage tower match is keeping one's cool. Okay. And then the green one, which、mm-hmm. charged through, it was what a move! Lore hold gets caught flat-footed, and wither bloom barrels ahead. Cool. And then the lesson was changing the equation from in incremental to exponential was a stroke of genius on my part. Awesome.、Um, so we also had two cards that were both in.、Um... Uh, the Mage Tower battles, then the、yeah. Frost Trickster and Charge Through. I would say my favorite would be the once again the blue one for the flavor text,、mm-hmm. um, keeping one's cool in a match. Just because I also play some tennis, and one of the main things with tennis is you always have to kind of keep your cool because once you you know get angry or show emotion or you know get too in your head,、mm-hmm. you can kind of lose the game. But if you kind of remain cool. And、uh, you, know, you get into com- the flow,、composure. right? Yeah. So I like. I would pick the blue one again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like it too because it's also like a mental game because you have to control your anger and your frustration. And even if you hit a ball that didn't go well, you still have to not get too upset about it in the moment and just move on to the next one. So you're a little bit, a little bit like the frost trickster here. Yeah. So two for <laughs> two for the blue. Um, so, after four cards,、uh, let's ask you a different question before we go on. Okay.、Um, so, how did you get into magic? So I started playing about a year ago. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but before that, I was interested in the game for, you know, eight years plus, and I would just watch people play it on YouTube. But where I was from, there was nobody else who that I knew played it. So I didn't have anybody to play with, really. So I just kind of watched people on YouTube. Right. And uh, early of 2020, I moved to a new city. Mm -hmm. And I was able to meet some people who played Magic and they kind of introduced me to Commander and they introduced me to, you know, a a play group. So we've been playing constantly since, you know, last June, May, June. So I'm really lucky on that part. And I started my online stuff, my Mm -hmm. Ring stuff, January 2021 of this year. So Mm -hmm. since I started that, I was able to make this online community that, you know, at any time of any day, I'm so grateful because I can, you know, jump on spell table and play a game with, you know, anybody anywhere. True. And yeah. also have these amazing conversations that I couldn't really have growing up because I didn't have anybody to talk to. So it's been really fun. True. I think the online part is really underestimated as, like you said, spell table is such a great tool to use and you can just with your favorite youtubers you can just play a game with them uh, if you want yeah. sometime maybe yeah not promising it <laughs> <laughs> but you could uh so that's really awesome there was like a, i lived in some places that had you know magic shops or comic shops but back then i was quite intimidated to go in because mm-hmm. I, I didn't know much but now uh, i'm so much more comfortable that i i could just pop in by myself so yeah, you you have your deck with you. You have a cool box around it that, that really yeah. helps as well, right? Yeah. yeah, true. Yeah, so now you also go to those shops. Yep. I mean, that's a major victory. That's a major yeah. victory as well. Yeah, cool. and I and I played some tournaments and. Uh... So yeah, we'll get back to some of those themes at least uh, later as well. Uh, but let's uh, unpack some more uh, cards. Okay. So moving on to the next one. Hmm. We have another common called Big Play. It's the green instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains a reach until the end of turn. Put a one one counter on it. A little bit of a follow up theme on and the grow spell and the plus one counter, which we have seen before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it seems like the artwork is that the person is possibly still playing within the the game that they were playing earlier too right the mage tower Mm -hmm. yeah and the next card is a land quandrix campus it's a land and it comes in tapped and you can tap it for a forest or a uh or a blue or an island yeah Mm -hmm. yeah an island and you can pay four to tap to scry one so it's a little bit of a slow one but i have seen this uh really work in drafts and mm-hmm. also, if you have any little vigor in your deck, uh, everything comes in untapped. So these were perfect for it. True. I have a little amulet. bit specific. <laughs> yeah, I have amulet of vigor in my sliver deck, so all my lands can come in untapped, which is nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, you really need that in the the five color uh, decks. I think yeah. with all the tap lands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. And then the next one is an uncommon called Siv- Sil- Sliver- Silver Sliver Quill Apprentice. Oh. <laughs> apprentice, right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. one of uh, the cycle of apprentices. Yeah, this is his Magecraft. It's a 2-2 mm-hmm. two, two, uh, for one white and one black. It's a human warlock with Magecraft. So whenever you cast a, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, target creature gets plus one, plus zero oh, until the end of turn. So it uh, grows your other creatures because the Silver Quill, of course, are not always about dissing each other. They are also uh, helping each other with their words. Exactly, yeah. So, and the last right. one, right? <laughs> and then the next one is Fracture. So it's a once again a one white, one black instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment or planeswalker. Not too cool. bad. Definitely not. So another silver quill card as well. What do you notice first of all when you look at these last four cards? Well, I definitely like the two to destroy target artifact enchantment or planeswalker out of the gate for sure. Mm -hmm. And it was cool that there was, you know, two 
Orzov, so white, black, and true. then um, the land, you know, you can never go wrong with lands. That's true. You really like lands. Yeah, I like lands. <laughs> you, you have to play your land drops. That's a really important part. And uh, yeah. it's what makes you win. But whenever I did my, you know, your your college quiz back then, I was mm -hmm. totally uh, Lord Hole. I love okay. the, the researching college. Mm -hmm. And that was totally up my alley. And I even got the Boros pre-con deck too with Ozgear. So yeah. Cool. Nice. We haven't had one uh, yet, I think, a lower old car. No. Hmm, maybe later. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, a little bit of a taste cleanser question again. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you said before that you are a physical planner. Uh, that's one of the companies that yeah. you run. What do you think is the best or most important uh, benefit of working on paper? Yeah, there's many, you know, scientifically proven um, things that say, you know, writing on paper is beneficial. One of mm -hmm. the things that I love most about writing things on paper is that I'm able to remember things more and really, you know, understand and can visualize things. Whereas if I don't write things down, I will definitely forget for sure but if I, I write it down I can remember it easier even in school I would just write everything down on paper even if it was like they gave it to us digitally just because I was able to retain the information a lot better if I actually write it down so yeah let's look at the next cards I think we, for the set booster yeah we have come to the other types of uh, card slots so okay. uh, that should be cool all right. Some rare, so, some mythics, maybe. Yeah, so we have Clever Luminancer. Mm -hmm. Clever, C L E V E R. Luminancer uh, for one white. The zero one creature with human wizard, one skin with magecraft. Mm -hmm. um, so when you copy or when you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. Right, so a little bit of an extra strong prowess on this card. Yeah. I have seen this uh, played in some standard decks as well. It is really strong. Yeah. Cool. Next up, we mm. have, ooh, Sagemore Witch. S Sagemore Witch. Yeah, that is a two and a black creature, mm. human warlock, uh, three, two with menace. It has ward, pay three life, and once again we see Magecraft again. Right. This time when you copy or cast or copy an instant or source of spell, you can create a one one black and green pest creature token. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So already a rare, so that's uh, that's cool. Yeah. And for our art card, mm -hmm. we have claim the firstborn. It's a one it's a one red sorcery. Mm -hmm. Gain control of target creature with mana value three or less until the end of turn. On tap that creature and it gains haste. Right. So I think what's really cool about this one is that uh the goblin from Throne of Eldraine is in this. Yeah. And what's cool, cool as well is that you will see in the flavor that it's Rowan telling Will um that they have a copy of the same tale of their world world uh in these books, which is really cool. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Want, want me to read you a bedtime story is what she says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With Strixhaven, I absolutely love the art cards in here. I, back whenever I was opening the box, I just collected so many of them. Now I just have a binder that I like look through because I love, love the art. So you have a binder of all the art cards then? Not all of them, but... Oh, okay. A good, a good chunk of them. Is, did you have this one already? I don't think so. Okay, cool. I don't think so. All right, so art uh, this time by Anato Finstark. Yeah. Um, looks really cool with the swaying bubbles around it. Yeah, I love I love the gold and the red card in this set. Mm -hmm. Is a foil called Relic Sloth. Ooh, cool. It's a foil. Here's our Boros card. Here it so is. So it's three, a red and a white for a 4-4 four, four beast creature with Vigilance and Menace. Right. And, and it's a foil. Cool. 
I know this one uh, very well. Some people have told me that the sloth should be the mascot of the channel because it's a slow creature too. <laughs> that is amazing. So I've looked at this a lot. <laughs> I think it's really cool. And in the bigger version version of this uh, art from uh, Ilse, the, uh, you can really see the stars as well in the art. Can you see that on the foil as well in real um, life? There should be really you small. Can, you can't really see the, the stars, but uh. in, the, in the foil version, maybe in the other version. Right. Yeah, so you can see it on the bigger picture, but I thought maybe they did some sprinkles or something on the art. Oh, yeah, that would be really cool. That would be... And the witch, the witch is really cool, too. They have a really cool vibe, that's for yeah. sure. With a sort of... It looks like a vampire, but it's a human. Yeah. And they are so dark. <laughs> that's cool. All right. Uh, so, yeah, first pack done. What did you think of the pack? You can be honest about them. It's not a problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. I uh, I like the like the witch and the art card and the factor. I don't actually play a lot of Magecraft, but mm -hmm. I mean, maybe <laughs> means I'm starting to get a whole lot in this pack. That's that's something I can look into in the future. Maybe but it's no, a sign. <laughs> maybe, yeah, because I don't think I have any Magecraft in any of my decks. Mm -hmm. But um, so. You, like I said before, you run three businesses, but you also have great planning to fight all the busyness. Um, or at least you make great planning tools. <laughs> um, and I think everyone would instantly know that having multiple businesses, even one, is really impressive. And um, I think anyone that has ever owned a business can say that they really snowball out of control. They become successful. Maybe not, that's maybe hard to work on as well but if they become successful it's really hard to walk and run after them how do you manage all this by yourself yeah so my three would be like you mentioned the, the planners mm -hmm. well, I think I have one here. Cool. so this is like one of our planners so it's paper harbors the company and yeah. i'm in canada and everything whether our planners and journals are made here in Canada and kept local. Mm -hmm. So it's a company that me and my sister run and we started it back in 2012. Uh, Paper Harbor, spelled the Canadian way, I guess, H-A-R-B-O-U-R. And we first started because my sister just wanted a planner that was made in Canada and she couldn't really find any. So she just sent me a message to say, hey, can you just make me one? Because I just do graphic design and things like that. Okay, and I was like, cool. yeah, sure, I'll make you one. Mm -hmm. And then her friends heard about it. And then it just kind of snowballed and everybody was like, oh, can I get one? So okay. we're like, sure, let's, I guess so. And then we, you know, we had our first version of a 2020 planner and it mm -hmm. sold out. And then it became number one on Amazon Canada's uh, best new seller for stationaries. And then we did a journal, sold out of that. And then now we have this undated planner because, you know, COVID times, it's kind of hard to start a planner for certain times because everything is so unexpected. So we decided right. to do an undated one. So you can kind of put in, uh, you know, the days and times you want. Right. So it kind of looks like that. Maybe somewhere a week got lost somewhere and you can skip that. <laughs> exactly. Or I if mean, you just... Yeah. Or if you pick up your, your planner in like October, you don't have right. to waste, you know, all these pages of months that you don't need. You can just start mid-year if you want. True. So by making it, so by yeah, not giving people the, the dates already, I think you all, you solved a lot of problems with that actually. Yeah. So cool. Horizons 2 mm -hmm. is the next one. We have the set booster of it. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one now. All right, so this one here has the token. Mm -hmm. It is a bird token with flying one one. Right. These are deceptively evil. <laughs> the next one is the art card. Mm -hmm. So you can see in the back as well which card it is, by the way. Yeah, it's a 
57 of 81. Mm -hmm. um, Lonus Cryptozoologist by Andrew Marr. Okay. And then following that, we have a mountain. Mm -hmm. and it's actually a really, really pretty one from Tony uh, S Z C Z U D I L O. Um, but it kind of have like the the yellow tones, and it's like a sunset over the mountains. Okay, cool, nice. Mm -hmm. And you can discard a card, then draw a card with rebound. Right. Uh, I think it's salvaging, right? Probably. Okay. Probably. The flavor on this is all that's left are broken beliefs. True. So at first they were breaking their churches and stuff, and now they're looking through them and looking back. I think you can see really well as well uh, from this uh, part by uh, Bot Cook. Um, that the guy who is looking at this artifact does look like he is remembering something. That Maybe is true. A memory. Vile Entumor. For two, a black and a black. Two, two, mm. Death Touch. A zombie warlock. When this card enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, put that card into the graveyard, then shuffle. That might be good in Marin. <laughs> true. A nice uh, ah. search search your library for a card for a graveyard recursion dex. Well, that's amazing. So it's an it's an enter the battlefield effect. Yeah. On the creature that's also a death touch creature. Yeah, and you can search your library for any card, any card. and put it in the graveyard for a recursion. That is Whoa. absolutely amazing, and I I feel like I'm gonna put that in my Marin deck. And awesome. next next step is another uncommon. It's a mm -hmm. demon for Arch Fiend of Sorrows. And right. when this card enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus two, minus two until the end of turn with mm. Unearth. Oh. Yeah, or if you could play it for free, that's always a good one too. If you can play it for free, then it's really good. But that's with anything, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it and does look really scary though. Yeah, I was just about to say, it uh, looks like a very large demon flyer. True, I, I wouldn't go in there. <laughs> yeah. Or, or make them sorrowful or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's do a little bit of a palette cleanser question uh, in sure. between. Um, so you have said the word slavers a lot. You have uh, said that it was one of your favorite decks at least. Um, what is the appeal of uh, slivers to you? Uh, <laughs> I made my sliver deck a few months ago because in my play group they were playing some pretty salty decks and I was like I'm going to make one to keep up with all these salty decks. One of which was like a Reaper King mm -hmm. and especially like in a 1v1 with a Reaper King it just destroys all your permanents. Mm -hmm. So I was like I'm going to do something about this. And right. so I made a sliver deck, which I'm fully aware it can get wild and crazy, mm -hmm. especially because th with the first sliver is just cascading. True. So you play a sliver and then you can cascade and play a whole bunch of free things, which yeah. I think it's fun. But uh, yeah, my play group doesn't. But your opponents doesn't. don't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but the, okay. But yeah, they were playing salty decks as well. So then it exactly. shouldn't be a problem. So. And I think too, because mostly before that, my decks were like, one color, two color. Mm -hmm. I don't think I really had any three color at that time. So I was only playing mono and, and two colors. And then just to jump into five colors, right. I, I loved it. I did so much research on, you know, what lands you should have to, you know, be the best mm -hmm. within, a, within a budget, within reason. Um, obviously, if you had unlimited budget, you can throw craziest things in there. But True. within a, a nice little budget, how to make the best. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So uh, maybe it's a good idea to make a video on uh, a guide to five I've, color lands. I've been thinking about it. Yeah. Cause... I would uh, watch it because uh, it seems hard to me. I mean, to most people, I think lands are the least fun stuff, fun uh, part about building your deck. Uh, but yeah. if you think it's really fun to make, uh, then yeah, I think you would help a lot of people with it. Please.
All right. So the next one we have mm -hmm. is Young Necromancer. Cool. A human warlock creature for four and a black for a two three. When Young Necromancer enters the battlefield, you may exile two cards from your graveyard. When you do, return target creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield. So that's another nice graveyard recursion. Definitely. Do you notice something about the art or the person in the art? It's not Liliana, is it? It is Liliana. It, it is not Liliana, but she is imitating her. Yeah, that, yeah, okay. So um, we have had one uh, other card like this before, which was Young Pyromancer, um, which isn't necessarily cosplaying Chandra as much, um, but people were making that joke. So now they made the Young Necromancer as a, as if she was cosplaying uh, Liliana, which is really cool. Yeah, and I love the flavor text too. Who needs imaginary friends when you've got dead ones? <laughs> but also cool that she just uh, isn't scared of them. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So next up, we have Graceful Restoration. Three and a white and a black for a sorcery. And you can choose one. Return tiger mm -hmm. card from your graveyard to the battlefield with additional normal counter. Return two tiger creature cards with two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Once again, we're right. still seeing this graveyard recursion, which is, I, I, I find a lot of fun. A little bit like the stars or the moon in the sky from yeah. uh, Robbie Trevino. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe sh you should make an uh, art deck with only uh, blue tones in them. And that would uh, be funny. Yeah, true. So maybe a Prismari deck or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So next up, we mm -hmm. have an angel, Glorious Enforcer. For awesome. a five, a white and a white. For a five, five with flying and lifelink. At the beginning of each combat, if you have more life than an opponent, this card gains double strike until the end of turn, which is really good. And again, and eight, yeah. the cool uh, tones of the arts as well. Sorry, what did you yeah. want to say? Uh, I, I find angel decks really interesting. I don't have one yet, but it's definitely mm -hmm. on like my list that I want to make because there's so many really cool angel cards. All right, so next step, mm -hmm. we have a sorcery called Scour the Desert. Right, For that was what three, I was talking about. <laughs> a three white white exile tigered creature card from your graveyard. Create X one one white bird creature tokens with flying, where X right. is the exile card's toughness. Yeah, uh, you see? <laughs> and that's why we got the token. <laughs> right, well, is this, there are not a lot of tokens in this set, I don't think. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can see here that these birds were scavenging on this uh, other animal, other bird maybe. <laughs> yeah, and I, I love the artwork too, how it almost seems like the birds are like cut out shadows yeah. of, of the art. And how it goes through underneath the uh, yeah. desert landscape and under the ground. Yeah, that's amazing. It's like a cycle of life. <laughs> yeah. One thing I am also curious about which which was a little bit more recent so might come as a surprise question uh was that a few days ago you had said that you had been planning a two-day um surprise party yeah <laughs> um with 30 gifts one for each year for someone but you didn't tell us i think for who it was oh it was a friend yeah a friend. so awesome. it was it was two days it was the 30th birthday mm -hmm. and one of the things was 30 gifts but once again they it definitely like ranged from like joke gifts to mm -hmm. you know a more serious um gifts and we did a lot of excursion with our pals like there was like a corn maze an escape room a custom board game night um yeah that you made as well you, you yeah. your friends or you yeah well that's cool. So you made your own board game. Yeah, it was kind of like the game What Do You Meme mixed with um, Cards Against Humanity. So mm -hmm. there was like pictures of them growing up and we all had kind of oh. like Cards Against Humanity What Do You Meme cards with little mm -hmm. sayings on them. Mm -hmm. um, and then we each picked, you know, a saying that went with this picture, like an embarrassing picture of them growing up. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then we all kind of picked one and whoever was it would pick their favorite card from among them. That's that's an awesome gift already. And then yeah. you made 30. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. and, and then there was um, uh, some like infinity tokens and mm-hmm. uh, different like things with like uh, dungeons and into the dungeon uh, wood wooden things for like the dungeon deck. Yeah, because you organized most of it, or yeah, I, mean, I did it all. Yeah, I love okay. uh, event planning. Yeah. Yeah, that's always cool. fun. I, I just like planning. And- uh, talking about value. Uh, let's go on to the last few, uh, maybe rares, maybe some uh, alternate art. Yeah, okay, let's see what we get here. Mm-hmm. So the next card is Master of Death. Oh, it's a demure. So a one in a blue and a black for a three one zombie wizard. And mm-hmm. when he enters the battlefield, survey two. At the beginning of your upkeep, F. Master of Dead is in your graveyard. You may pay one life if you do return it to your hand. So once again, some more graveyard stuff here. Yeah. Coming back from the dead, like most things, gets easier with practice. <laughs> That's uh, such a nice um, flavor text for graveyard recursion decks. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Next up, we have Bone Shredder. It's a 1-1 one, one creature for a 2 and a black with flying and echo 3. Mm-hmm. And when it ETBs, destroy target non non artifact, non black creature. But you can also sacrifice it and then recur it again and then kill stuff over and over. All right, next up we have really cool art of mm-hmm. Terminal Agony. It's a two, a black, and a red for a sorcery. Destroy target creature with madness, one black and one red. Mm-hmm. And the earth is by Lucas Graciano. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Looks awful. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and uh, I find these borders are cool too with like the, the gold going through them. Uh, again, a uh, little bit with the blue and uh, red in the back as I well. I see that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I like cool. how you can see like sparkles of the red or maybe it's from the um, fire in the background too, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. He's All quickly right. deteriorating. Yeah. And the last card of this is a foil land. Okay. Called Miss Bolt Bridge. It's an mm-hmm. artifact land. It enters tapped. It's indestructible. You can tap it for an island or a swamp. Yeah, I love I love how the blue transitioned to the black. And the it's sky also well. mirror colors, yeah. I mean, these clouds look really weird there. Yeah. Awesome. So in this pack, what was your favorite art from these? Hmm, favorite art, I would say probably graceful restoration. Mm-hmm would be one of my favorite because it just seems, um, I love the the blue and the purple again, and there's almost like a space or, you know, a sky kind of mm-hmm. feel to it. So that's yeah. definitely one of my favorite. And then I also have a second favorite, which mm-hmm. is the bridge. I do like how, interesting the blue goes into the black for the artwork mm-hmm. especially with the foil the foil looks so good right cool all right next is time spiral which i'm very excited for because you never know what you so i'm going to go ahead and open the time spiral remastered giraffe booster pack all right so I'm getting better at the pack opening. That was first try. We got it. Nice. Like we said, the last one is <laughs> always the best. I will get the token that's in mm-hmm. the back. It's a Lana War Elf. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Interesting. I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I mean, these are really, uh, really strong. And if, if there's a creature that makes them, that's that's amazing. Yeah, I'm not sure where it comes from. It's a common called mm-hmm. a Shrek Shaman. 
it's a goblin mm -hmm. for a one, a red, a red for a two, two. And this card can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or red creatures. Mm -hmm. And next step for the next one is um, Gossamer Phantasm. Mm -hmm. It's a 2-1 illusion for a one and a blue with flying. And when this card becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. Like it's, it can be held to the ground. It looks yeah. a little bit like Ember Cool too. Yeah. <laughs> and the next one is a uh, an ape spirit called Simeon Spirit Guide. It's an ape creature with two two for a two and a red, and you can exile it from your hand and add one red mana. It's free to, to exile it from your hand, and then you can uh, really have a quick start. Yeah. It. I see right away that it's banned in modern for this reason, probably. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> so the flavor says at uh, Jaya Ballard, so the the like the teacher of Chandra, uh, says it's rarely worth questioning where the mana comes from. Just be grateful. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. That's cool. Mm -hmm. The next common is Dead Spore. Talid for a one and a black, a zombie fungus creature for a one one. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on this card. Remove three spore counters and create a one one green sparling creature token. Mm. And you can sack a sparling and target creature gets minus one, minus one until the end of the turn. <laughs> yeah, or if you had, you know, uh, something that doubles tokens and you had mm -hmm. like four and you sack them then you're giving something minus four minus four then it becomes really strong and separatings are pretty easy to make yeah usually <laughs> yeah and i and, and there's some green cards too that makes like x barreling creature tokens so i can see you having a, you can probably get a lot in here green tor weld archer an elf archer with reach and death touch can find this one <laughs> what did you say it was called a torn t-h-o-r-n w-e-a-l-d mm -hmm. cool their arrows are tipped with basilic eyes and fletched with cockatrice feathers is pit keeper when pit keeper enters the battlefield if you have four or more creature cards in your graveyard you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand Again, <laughs> returning stuff from your graveyard. I am. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what What is the thing in the background here? Is it a dragon have, or something? I have. I'm not sure. It almost looks like a demon, maybe. Oh right. So, yeah. I think, I think you have the face and the horn and the ears. True. It depends on what you see as the horns. <laughs> okay. So let's have a little bit of a palette cleanser question again. So, I think one thing that was really cool that I recently saw from you is that you started uh, to identify with the Beyblade. <laughs> um, but you also use Beyblades to decide who begins your magic games. I think that's really cool too. Yeah. Um, if you would have to invent a new way of deciding who goes first in a magic game, uh, what would it be? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, so me and some of my pals in the playgroup, um, we would like have a Beyblade battle and whoever wins would go first. There was other cool. times when it's whose who's birthday is coming up next can go first. Mm -hmm. Or um, like if you had a whole bunch of like Skittles, mm -hmm. I don't you guys have those there? Um, who, if you just pick one and whoever gets like a red one can go first. Uh, um, so you have to eat, eat a lot of Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> so people always want to play at your place. <laughs> yeah. You can also go do some sports, but uh, <laughs> doing Beyblades is a little bit more accessible, I think. So the next card we have is another common, and it's mm -hmm. a sliver. Oh. A Gemhide Sliver. For a one and a green, all slivers have happened, add one mana of any color. Yeah, full of That's sliver. true. Cool. So uh, will you use this one? Will you replace I it? Already ha <laughs> I already have this one, yeah. I heard, but you can still replace it as a memory. It's such a good one too, because you're tapping them to add mana. So. And make more slivers, of course. Exactly. What does the flavor say? 
The land is wary. Even Sky Shroud is depleted. We must find another source of mana, one that is growing despite our withering world. We have um, Amru, A M R O U, Amru Seekers for a two and a white. And this creature can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or white creatures. So it's kind of like uh, the shaman we pulled at the beginning, mm -hmm. except that was red and now this is white. So the next one is another common called mm -hmm. Rift Bolt. It's a sorcery for two and a red. Mm -hmm. And it deals three damage to any target and you can suspend it for one red. Okay. So a uh, belated uh, lightning strike. <laughs> yeah. All right. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah. It's Is this cool. a zombie? Right. It's cool that you can actually see like the lightning bolt too. True. That's awesome. I think it's um, when you know that someone is being resurrected in like a day or something, that this uh, magician uh, cast a suspended rift bolt on the zombie already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because he knew that he was coming back, so he didn't have to be there. <laughs> it's another common. Mm -hmm. It's a weight called Errant, E-R-R-A-N-T, Doomsayer. It's a 1-1 creature, human rebel, for tap it. Tap target creature with toughness two or less. Yeah. But uh, something that can tap for free, that can tap something else, can be really annoying, so that's strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two or less, that's pretty interesting. And also, also the flavor text is not wrong. Heed my words, traveler. Plagues, war, desolation. All mere hints of what is yet to come from Dominaria's Vault of Horrors. Dominaria did get uh, get those. <laughs> yeah. True. And, and it's another sliver. Dark oh. Heart Sliver. All slivers have sacrificed this permanent. You gain three life. But I think what is cool is there is another card that is called Dark Heart of the Wood, which also has the same effect. Oh, interesting. So uh, maybe it was uh, simulating that Dark Heart of the Wood. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I like the artwork of this too, because it looks really matte looking. Like really? The, the colors seem almost like a dull matte. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit of a question in between. Um, yeah. So you have, I think, two Aristocrats deck that I saw on your uh, on your link tree, um, which is Marin uh, in Gorgari or Tezan Orsov. Who do you think is better as an uh, aristocrat commander? I I love I definitely love Marin for sure, but mm -hmm. I like playing Tesa more. I would I would probably grab my Tesa one over my Marin one because I do have a lot more fun with that deck specifically. And like, right. I do have to make a bit more work into my Marin deck, but mm -hmm. it's hard because I'll, what I want to do with Marin is basically what I do with my Tesa deck. Like okay. there's a lot of cards that I just kind of want to put in Marin to make it mm -hmm. almost the same. So right. I'm kind of not sure if I want to go down that route to have two similar decks, but yeah, I, I love uh, the, like the, the sacking mm -hmm. and you know, it's, there, I have a lot of like pingers, like um, Zelaport, Cutthroat, and Blood Artist, and a lot more pingers. So like, once I can start going and start sacking, you know, then it's like uh, seven, eight, you know, damage per one sack plus. So cool. Um, yeah, let's go on to the last few cards of the whole video. I think. Sweet. All right. So next up. We have a worm, phantom mm -hmm. worm, for four, a green and a green, for a two zero worm spirit. When phantom worm enters battlefield, put four plus one plus one counters on it. If damage would be dealt to this card, prevent that damage, remove a counter. Seems a little bit expensive. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't run it per se, but no, I can see where they were going with it. Yeah, true. I think it's a unique effect to have, uh, like the plus one counters go away and then the toughness. But yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe if you had like uh, Yogmoth or something where it would double 
double your counters mm -hmm. or like something like that but right there I are mean, a lot of ways to make more counters of course that's true yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. hit, hit or miss for sure true all right so the next one we have is street uh what a black for a three and a black black for a three floor four with swamp walk and mm -hmm. cycling with pay to life okay that's an easy way to cycle it almost yeah. uh free <laughs> yeah also a uh, swamp walk is often relevant in commander as well uh but still three man three attacker is not the best the flavor is really scary i think so the lamps on Windmore Street snuff themselves at midnight and refuse to relight, afraid to eliminate what lies in the darkness. Yeah, that Ooh. is a... What I always think of, if you see these uh, houses in the background, is if you were trying to sleep at night and it was a, you, you live in a town like this and apparently there's thunder going on, and then you look outside on the not lit streets and you see a woman with these wisps behind her walking past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would not uh, enjoy living there. No, me neither. <laughs> so we have a shape shifter called mm -hmm. Vesuvan. V-E-S-U-V-A-N. It is a three, a blue and a blue, and starts off with zero, zero. And as this card enters the battlefield or is turned face up, you may choose another creature on the battlefield. If you do, until this card is turned face down, it becomes a copy of that creature, except it has at the beginning of your upkeep, you may turn this creature face down. This card is a Path to Exile. That's a classic. Mm. <laughs> so such a classic nice. card. That's something that you definitely always need. Yeah, I will definitely use this one. You can never have too many Path to Exiles. True. Probably at least one in every white deck. So this I mean, is... you we're talking about building a mono white deck. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's uh, the older border style as well, which is which is nice. Yeah. Um, which is uh, because pre previously uh, I was looking through your videos and, and stuff, of course, um, and you had a video about uh, your history with magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, you shortly mentioned that it was so nice to uh, meet those people in real life, uh, finally. Um, and also to talk with uh, other female players, which you said mm -hmm. before today as well. Um, and yeah, well, I do think that it is important to know that there are always people like you that play the game. Um, is there anything that you would like to tell all those uh, well, female uh, Magic players that uh, or maybe haven't found their community yet. Yeah, totally. Um, I I think it was only just a few months ago whenever I played my first commander game with all females and it was online with Zbex, Shay, and MTG Girl. Mm -hmm. And it cool. was so cool to have that experience. And I found that um, with this online community, I, I was able to find like so many more females because in my city there's not a whole lot like maybe just one or two other ones that like I I know of that I play with but for anyone else out there if there's nobody in your city that you see just mm -hmm. like come online um, you know join Twitter or Instagram or TikTok and you just start um, like following other MTG creators and I think you'll be surprised at how quick you would feel um, involved in the community because we're, I find we're pretty small knit in the realm of things. And for the most part, everybody's so welcoming. So, Definitely. so just join one of the platforms or all of the platforms and, you know, start having the conversations and there's discord groups too. And I think if, if you're on spell table, you know, you can probably get a game in or at the very least have these conversations about magic and about, you know, your favorite cards or, if, you know, you're making a deck. Yeah. But yeah, I think awesome. there's, there's, there's a lot of us out there more that you probably realize if you're just starting. So.
so. So definitely try uh, to get into contact with those uh, uh, yeah, other people and they will yeah. definitely want to help uh, you as well. So definitely fo- follow uh, at Sol- Solring and the G as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to get in- into such a community. Um, lastly, is there uh, something that's going on in your life that you will want to share uh, in general? So maybe something yeah. else that, that you are building or making? Um, Well, in terms of like magic stuff, I'm now that summer is over and like I I had a bit of family time in August. So now I'm back in, you know, kind of the working mode and getting back into the whole content stuff. Um, I'm putting a lot more time into my YouTube channel, which is cool. So I have a lot of videos coming down the line for my YouTube stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's that's pretty interesting and exciting. And I got some, exciting. like I said, some special guests and some cool video topics that I'm able to do more in than just a minute or three minutes on TikTok. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, well, we should be looking forward to that. So uh, definitely follow you on YouTube as well or subscribe on YouTube as well. Um, so, what? Well, It's it's Solring M2G on YouTube as well, right? On all, yeah, on all the platforms. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. So follow Solring M2G uh, or subscribe. Sorry. To, how, I know. How could I do it's this like wrong? subscribe, like. <laughs> it's follow, follow. subscribe. Uh, that was subscribe to Solring M2G on YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, well, thank you for uh, being here. I think it was a cool uh, interview uh, for me at least. So uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, I had so much fun and thank you so much for inviting me and I can't wait to uh, see whenever this is up and I'll I'll share it on my socials too. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Awesome. Bye everyone. (laughs) Bye.